Welcome back, everybody. Aesop Grimm here. This is the continuation of our Crusader Kings 3 Chronicle, where we're trying to reclaim Natalia for the Romans. And, um... The biggest event from last episode is probably... the disinheriting of our drunkard son here. Not really entirely because of this, but in addition to that, he's... I would call this average. He's he's not bad, and he's even fair. He's pretty. He's he's good, at the low end of good. Well, it actually literally says he's average. At uh, intrigue, but more so, it is because uh, we had another boy, and he got the comely trait and the intelligent trait. So that's who we're preparing. Valens is our heir now. Now, it's a bit of a roll of the dice. You can see he's already developing well, and at five years old, eclipses uh, Marcus in a few areas. Uh, but the roll of the dice is that his father, Marcus II, is infirm and not long for this world. Now, we gained that trait I think right before Valens was born so it's been five years and he's been able to stick around he's he has this whole of body trait that helps counteract that so we'll have to see how it goes um, but uh, we are basically stuck it's because of a blunder I made with my succession laws where I had confederate partition under his dad and because I had that titles went uh, this this kingdom title went to his brother and so we've been trying to get his brother who is a sodomite and we exposed that secret we've been trying to get him excommunicated uh, but the uh, Pope likes them, so go figure, read into that what you like, <laughs> you know, but it's not the Pope, it's the uh, Patriarch. Uh, so that's a thing. Sardinia does not belong to us as of right now. I have not really expanded north very much, mostly because of that. I'm taking this opportunity to try and beef up our lands to get development going here in Salerno, which is now at a 34. Do we have a development app? I know we do. Yeah. And uh, that's having a, an effect on surrounding lands. So, uh, really, Italy starting to uh, be one of the leaders in the world when it comes to development. This area is really nice. This area is extremely nice. It's probably the best in the world. Does the East have anything? India? southern india and uh gosh just looking at this map this is saudi arabia modern day saudi arabia uh, so this is the iraq area i think and that's something that i should definitely just absolutely know but i i don't <laughs> um so anyway uh it's we are starting to uh see this green up a little bit we're just getting out of the brown and into kind of a, a yellowish green color and uh, faith is good to go for right now culture uh, man it sure does seem to be taking a while I haven't seen anything change in culture f since I took my steward off of that and put him onto development so I don't know um We'll have to, to see how that goes in the future. But that's pretty much our overview of uh, how things are shaping up as of right now. This is what the world looks like from an eagle eye, 3,000 foot view, you know. Europe is basically Bavaria, Lotharinga, 
Lotharingia. Lotharingia? I, I want to say it's Lotharingia. J -j uh, France and Aquitaine. Asturias owns most of the Iberian Peninsula. It looks like Alba... Alba lost their territory right here. They had some territory up... Alba is Scotland. And they had some territory in here, probably through inheritance. And again, probably through inheritance, that territory seems to have moved over to Bavaria now. And then uh, Lotharingia is moving into the British Isles, it looks like. What is this place right here? High Chieftain of Upland. Right here. So that is our status as of right now so what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to let time roll forward we're on 24 september 11:30 a.d and i am going to place you guys on pause right now okay welcome back guys i am um, i was named the spy master of the byzantine empire and i tried playing around with that seeing if i could you know get a hook on our king and stuff when, Namely, hey, I worked. Uh, I also checked. I double checked with the patriarch to see if he would excommunicate our brother. Uh, but none of that seems to be working. I do have my spy master in um, Constantinople, looking for secrets, and he's turning up plenty of them. But nothing I seem to be able to use. Uh, we also got a learning style perk, so I applied that to the family tree and diplomacy, and our dynasty can up its legacy again so uh power and prosperity maybe monthly stewardship noble veins chance i mean that seems good well let's From, from a role-playing pers- Oh, I also was thinking this. I'm going to go ahead and pick this so that I can get to the middle of the tree. Because these are my primaries right now. I'm trying to role-play it a little bit. It, I, I wasn't the most excited about this one, but... Uh, trying to get these two trees, like get this one halfway and then maybe I can start looking at glory. Okay. Um, yeah, speed five. I was rushing forward some. All right, guys, I'm going to, we're in 1132 AD, March. So I'm going to put you back on pause. All right, welcome back, guys. We're now looking at uh, 13 September 1133 AD. Our daughter came of age. This is the one that was comely, intelligent, and fecund. Unfortunately, she's also a drunkard. But we married her to the son of our king. Yes. So we are tied into this family via marriage. And then... Our wife gave us a second son, and he actually got all three of these traits. He is comely, intelligent, and fecund. So uh, that's really good, and uh, we are tutoring him. Marcus II is tutoring him, and he is uh, getting the learning focus just like his, his brother uh, Valens. Uh, before I forget, over here in Apulia, in the, in the barony of Trani, we are busy building tax offices. I also converted a barracks. It was giving us levies. Um, and I converted that into a hunter's lodges. Because we had these other two money-making buildings up already. 
and because these are planes, and so uh, these are, these produce good money. That's why I put tax offices in here too. I was a little hesitant on it because we did the same thing at Salerno. So I was really thinking to make this more military focused, but um, it seems best suited for this. So construction wise, uh, Trani is being built up. Bari is already built up. It's at level four across the board and castle level two. So we will accept this summons to war. We're going to go help the kingdom of Asturias again. They're taking a de jour county. Uh, this one right here, Salamanca. So it looks like these are our two war targets that we would want to siege those down nine thousand men what we got here oh he could probably handle this on his own so we should win this war pretty handily we got ten thousand troops my spy master has come to me with grave news while we do not yet know who someone is plotting to kill my courtier gratian Gratian was our executioner, but he did something. I didn't read the whole event, but it gave us a serious cause to imprison him. So that's what we did. Now somebody's plotting to kill him while he's in prison. So not sure what's going on there. Okay, Duke Flain, enemy ally has joined the war. There's 14,000. That's not against us, though. It is my knight Maximus that is plotting against my courtier. Okay. Coming up on the new year. It's Christmas now. New Year's Eve, New Year's, 1134 AD. actively supporting Duke Adrianu and his Liberty faction. However, my wife has a plan to change that. Trust me, the things I could tell Duke Ricardo would make him disavow Adrianu in an instant. Uh, actually, could you make me look like a better choice? What is his opinion of us? Yeah, it's it's plus two right now. The Duke of Benevento. I better start a sway scheme on him. Let's look at uh, factions. Two members. Adrianu is the leader. I was checking to see if we could marry to form an alliance. Well, what we could do is maybe send him a gift. Oh, snap. I could, rec I could request an excommunication. No, he wouldn't do it. I'll revoke his title. Let's see if that causes this faction to break apart. Fascination discovered heraldry. Okay.
um 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 innovations so we just learned heraldry ah we can enact the high partition law okay the next thing that i want there was a building i wanted to upgrade that required windmills but i think it might be more important to get hoardings which will allow me to upgrade my castles that'll take how long eight years okay how are we doing over here we got 10 months left on this siege and bump up to speed four I hoped it would not come to this but I'm left oh he doesn't want me to be the spy master okay that's fine well I suppose there's not what is this I'm at a local tavern enjoying some good food and some good music the music in particular is being played by a veteran bard who plays the lute as beautifully as he sings in the middle of his performance however tragedy strikes the strings on his lute snap and he is bereft of an instrument to play he looks heartbroken as he stares in shock at the remains of his lute well i suppose there's not much any of us can do about it ha how pathetic how this is now this is real entertainment it's all right i'll buy him a drink and give him money for a new loot it's only eight gold and we gain 10 prestige okay nine months left on this siege oh seven we jumped ahead six our uh, siege equipment is helping us here my steward has proven himself highly capable especially in administrative matters there are some projects i would like to undertake in the county of capua my liege with your blessing of course we gain 150 prestige if we do it ourselves. development growth plus 10 percent he's already at plus 100 opinion of us i can handle this administrative issue myself all right six months left five months Uh, frame the despot's letter in my hall. Stick to professional courtesies. We're at plus 11% in this war. Keeps the trait just, that's what we want. Okay, hit pause. Prisoners taken in siege. You captured King Ordanyu's nephew, Abdul Aziz, and his son and heir, Ordanyu, during the siege of Coimbra. Ooh, that seems rather large. That's a big deal. Let's go down here. Oh, we can take a perk. We will take Befriend. I'm down to 8,000 men. I took some attrition. Oh, it jumped up to 8,700. Okay. Uh, I better pay the Royal Court a visit. You ate the royal roasted almonds to the dungeon. No. That's that's silly. 60% chance you convince Agrippina to lay off the roasted almonds and pay you back. Oh, you better pay for that. 
your barn from the pantry from now on. That's funny. Uh, diplomacy challenge. Oh, she refuses to pay me back. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do we got here? A peddler in a cloak with dozens of baubles and knickknacks sewn onto it rattles up to me. I have with me a precious weapon only worthy of your hands. Oh, yeah. By the way, guys, I don't know if I showed you this. I think last episode I had a crown made. So we do have a crown now. Uh, the Holy Lance of Antioch, the Spear of Destiny itself. You shall utterly annihilate the infidel on the battlefield with this. She pulls out a tiny shard of metal, which looks rather like a sewing needle. Sell your lies elsewhere. Okay, we will hold court here, petitioners. Send forth the first one. You shall be rewarded with a place in my household. What's this? Over the last few days, I've heard tell of a mighty hero of the peasantry who has won the hearts and minds of the common people through incredible deeds and matchless bravery. This hero, who goes by the name Gaius, has been defending the small folk from the Russian raiders and has now traveled the way to Salerno to seek an audience with me. There is no doubt that Gaius is a great hero. However, my court, my courtiers, are adamant that I do not elevate a commoner beyond their station. Uh, I need a knight. Every knight loses 15 opinion of you. Why? I have commoner knights. You pay 500, you gain Honored Frontier Hero, you gain 75 Prestige, lose 30 Stress, he gains a title and 150 Prestige. I think I can make up for that lost opinion. Oh, plus 1.2 a year, it would take a while. Alright, give him, give him the title. There we go. A markedly disgruntled Duke Magnus hurries to your throne. Liege, I have a right to the county of Messina, no matter what anyone else might say. Will you support my claim and have your vassal Duke Adrianu relinquish what does not belong to him? I will not. And hopefully that helps dis disband that uh, faction against me. Countess Zine and her husband approach cautiously, wary of the assembled court. My lord, I am sure someone in the Despotate is trying to harm my husband. I have no evidence, but suspect Duke Sevalad, given his reputation for villainy, comes for my throat. I beg you, imprison Sevalad and put a stop to this madness. I can't imprison him with no evidence. I could I could question him. I could I mean I don't see a problem with as I have a fair reason no one will think me a tyrant. All right, let's question him. Duke Festival denies any involvement. Okay. And that's the end of that. Uh, let us not waste more time hunting for secrets. And does that faction exist? There are no factions against you. Okay, good. There we go. All right, we won that siege. We're at plus 43% war score now. Let's start moving up to take some of these armies down. More soldiers, higher quality, more men-at-arms. However, they got two armies that can come in. Looks like they're not going to. Okay, slow this down to speed three. And it's still us versus 4,300, so these guys did not get there in time. We will fight this. 
and Banner Lord. We got about five minutes left in this episode. And we might finish this with three fights in Banner Lord and just go go long on the episode again. Give me a group about that size. Give me 10% of that group. And back here. Shield wall. Spread the archers out. I don't really have... Yeah, I do have some high ground here, don't I? But I think I have to attack. Just get a single line of shields on the back side of this archer group. Okay, go ahead and click ready. Are they coming to me? Actually, it appears that they are. Oh, that's right. They attacked me, didn't they? No. No, I attacked them. They had reinforcements coming in. I need you to face, line, toggle, hold, fire, dismount, Turn. F7, Let's see if you guys can do this eloquently, you cannot, okay. Move out. Do that. Got incoming. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And that tree up here helps also, it kind of makes, forces the cavalry to split a little bit. And once they're within about 150 meters, that's whenever I'm going to let my bowmen start firing. 170. 160. Whoa, pick your target. Oh, I'll leave. Hey. All right. Let's get after these guys. Whenever I get crossways there. Okay, I let my cav go. Oh boy, I almost got clipped there. They went after my infantry for some reason. Okay, things are looking pretty good already. My cav is harrying their archery line. Okay, I'm gonna get around here, see if I can run right down their archery line.
Okay, I think I just won on the front lines. I don't see hardly any. Oh, they're they're running. Okay. Golly, what a decimation. Timer just ran out. Oh yeah, my arm is looking looking tough, man. All my knights running around, my cataphracts. I mean, everything looks real strong. It's it's not just the way it looks, guys. This is what I like about CK3. It kind of builds up a story after a while. And we've had a bunch of battlefield successes. And so my guys are just, they, after, after a period of time of watching them on the battlefield, seeing the sizes grow and... Um, you know, the number of troops in each outfit and the effectiveness. And I guess I have something to contrast it to from the early days because they look, they look sharp. Enemies are fleeing. Uh, again, with CK3, you really want to ride them down. Oh, they're all off the field though. Okay, very well. I don't know who I who I played as. 114 kills by the cataphracts. It seems like oh there we are, Sebastianos with 12 kills. Alright, good deal. Good deal. That was excellent. And uh unpause. We should get, oh, now we fight again. So it's 8,700 versus about 2,700. Because those reinforcements showed up. Okay. You know what would be cool? Yeah. I'm not seeing a great way to take advantage of this terrain. Oh, it's a lot of guys. Yeah. Okay, so then. Play on the right side? No, we better play on the left. Line up over there. Okay, this, uh, this should be good. Uh, just kind of a general... We don't have a lot of guys coming against us. Alright, now are they coming at us? They should be because these are the reinforcements. They're, they're the attackers. We have just taken the field from the army that they were hurrying to reinforce. These guys are probably tired. They were probably on a a double march. I think that group over there of Cav is coming. Two hundred and fifty. I'm gonna go ahead and let my bows loose quite a bit earlier than I normally would.
this seems a weird place to play around at. Let's see if we can get more inland. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my cav with me, hopefully. Right into their archery line, which will, I think, mess their cav's plans up. Caballeros hit the ground hard there. Okay, again, one more charge into their archery line. Okay, since I have my dudes with me, how about a hammer and anvil? And now, release Cav. He's running, he's running off the field, yeah. Enemy captain fell. Look at my cap just swarming the field. My shield wall's holding strong. I'm not sure how my archers did, but it looks like given their positioning that they kind of self-managed pretty well. Those soldiers got left. They got hung out to dry, man. Bad day for you guys. Oh, what a what an awful way to go. <laughs> Sebastianos with 12 kills. Hit done. It'll bring us back into CK3. We should get two after action reports. Oh, we have another fight. How many? 215? No. Glory is widely known and victory. Okay. After action report. Detail. Yeah, 18 men left. Um, Knights and events. Our knight was wounded by Count Boson III. Humbert slew Lawai, Lawai while he was retreating from battle. Our knight wounded Ordanyu. We captured Mayor Oveco and Count Boson III was also captured. Captured Infante Martin Gomezes and we captured Duke Andreas of Beja. All right, cool. We probably captured somebody important, and that's why I went to 100%. The war's over. We'll bring our troops back home and uh, go to courtiers, go to prisoners, ransom whom we can. We have 1173 ducats now, 1273, 1303, 1388, 1408. And it's probably simply all they can afford right now. Oh, another daughter has grown up. Uh, we are quite full on, on alliances. And so... You get every princess's dream. You get to marry a knight. F 
50? No, that would not be every princess's dream. Uh, 18 with a prowess of 25. There we go. Perfect. And he's a Roman and he's Orthodox. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's Gaius. That's the guy that... Yeah, there we go. Hey, I win twice. This is the guy that I had to put a title on instead of inviting him into my court because my knights would be upset. But now he can properly come in. He's married into the family. Perfect. Real happy about that. Okay, let's get the troops home. We'll disband them and then we'll close out the... Uh, the episode hit on pause Go up to speed five get these guys home uh he, i don't know why he wants me to be a spy master i'm not good at it uh, i have a nine in spy master and spying intrigue but okay uh unpause Cost 97 gold to get our guys back home. Tax assessor was constructed in Trani. You gain supports female empowerment for three years. What what kind of an event is this? That, talk about immersion breaking. Are you joking? One day I took a walk in a meadow in a nearby town when I saw an old gentleman surrounded by a few women. Upon closer investigation, I noticed they were practicing arm and leg movements. I immediately recognized as that of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was, of course, curious and approached them to ask what they were doing. As it turns out, the elder was a veteran of many wars. Now, he spends time showing others how to defend themselves, and today he is teaching some local maidens. We always talk of our women needing to preserve their honor, he said. So why not teach them the means to defend it? It helps keep them active, too. And they can better help us if bandits attack. Yeah, I get it, you know, and it sounds absolutely reasonable to me, but it's so ahistorical that it kind of pisses me off that it's even in this game. You know, I mean, we're talking about swordplay, right? Th there are martial arts out there. I'm not going to go on a big tangent on this, but like Wing Chun, for example... Is a martial art that both Bruce Lee and Jackie, uh, Jackie, uh, Bruce Lee and Jet Lee, um, incorporated it into their martial arts. It is a legit form of self defense, and it was originally designed for women. It, it's completely designed around, um, avoiding the weaknesses of women and capitalizing on, on the strengths. Okay. Fighting with swords is the opposite of that. Uh, I know you've got your Joan of Arcs out there, but Joan of Arc was a leader. She was she lifted the morale of people, and she was uh, tactically intelligent, and she was uh, bold. She was bold. She understood how to seize the initiative. She was a field general that sat in the back. Okay? You put a girl on the field and ask her to swing a sword all day long in a blood and guts fight, she dies 10 times out of 10 very, very rapidly. This is BS. It's so stupid, it hurts my brain. <laughs> and so I'm going to go uh, with this one. Looks down on women. I don't care. I, I, I just think that this, this is a retarded event for a game like this and for what they're trying to learn if it was hand-to-hand -hand combat it would make a lot more sense but the way that it's phrased the way it's worded even the whole women empowerment a very modern term i think that the word is anachronism this this feels very anachronistic to me and it's upsetting so there we go that was what a stupid event And our people are home. We will disband the troops. You get to go home to your wives and children. And we're in 27 September of 1135. Better back that down back to speed three.
We can ask for gold. I don't know if I'm going to. Oh, plus 95. Yeah, we are. We'll get 901 gold. Uh, prisoners can be ransomed, so... Apparently was able to scrape some gold together. And uh, this is... She's part of the Aquila family. You will be educated by... Is that your dad? Maximus... Marcus. Your son and knight. Okay, so... You will be educated not by Maximus. Well, maybe. But, uh... Let's look at the learning scores. How about your grandmother, who has an excellent learning score? Okay, so that is taken care of. We're at peace. It is the 3rd of October, 1135 AD. And we will save that game. All right, guys, again, I'm Aesop Grimm. Thank you for coming by the channel. I hope you like what you saw. I hope all is well in your neck of the woods. And I will see you in the next episode where this story continues.